Hello YouTubers, this is a new session where I get to show you some very interesting feature that you may or may not be able to incorporate in your day to day work, you know, depending on your business need and the system that you're building and all that. But it's definitely something really useful and really important for you to know, just in case you run into a situation where you want to kind of, you know, manage certain features and enable and disable certain features in your system. And then I'm going to give you some real life examples that kind of shows you, you know, how an enterprise uh, level system can leverage capability just such as the one that I'm about to show you. So uh, in this particular session, I'm going to show you a capability that allows you to uh, turn on and off certain functionality in your system without having to use if statements and, you know, do all this ugly work, you know, for feature flag and stuff like that. Let me just show you first what we're talking about here in simple uh, kind of terms and then we'll jump into some uh, amazing use cases that you might find interesting. Here's your basic program, right? A hello world program, you know, just print out hello world. Let's, you know, build this program real quick and let's just make sure that, you know, things are working the way they are supposed to. Here it is, .NET run. So far, so good, right? <clears throat> I, I, I'm starting to kind of adapt the whole command line run the program thing so I don't kind of distract you. I want you to stay with me focused on the same on the same page now let's just write a simple function here called foo right and this function will basically say hello universe like this okay if i call hello universe in here you know as you may have guessed it should print out all the little details about the universe okay so far so good beautiful now, what if this Hello Universe, you know, feature is not ready yet to go to production, but the code is ready and all that, you know, but we don't want to enable it yet. We don't want to make that function available to the world yet. What should we do about that? There's this capability here that you can use. This is a native capability. I'm not installing it in libraries or anything uh, that allows you to put a, a certain condition on certain routines, you know, that disables these routines, you know, if if that feature is not defined or not turned on, right? How does that work? Let's call it universe feature like this. So I defined my conditional in here and you have your function, even though your function is cold, watch what happens. I think we might need a, a rebuild or something. Yeah, there you go. So, so look, I, I called a function, but it's like this function never even existed, right? It's like, it's not there. Why is that? Because it's looking for a particular uh, a, a, a flag to be enabled, right? The compiler, you know, when you're building your system, it's looking for a particular defined uh, uh, precondition, you know, or preprocessor for your system to be able to kind of determine whether it wants to, to execute that block of code or not, right? How do we define this feature? There's so many different ways you can do this. One very obvious one is for you to go basically and say, I'm going to go at the top here and say, define, right, uh, universe, let me copy it so I don't make mistakes and embarrass myself. There you go, universe feature. Okay, and if you do it this way, now if I run my program, watch this. Now it's, it's operational again right a very simple and easy way that you can you know do this what's other ways that you can use this capability i can take this out and go in your c sharp program in the properties area go on to the build you'll see something here called conditional compilation symbols right let's do a semicolon in here and just print out universe feature universe feature you'll see that this is being used all over the place you just you may or may not have known about it and that's okay that's what this channel and this and these videos are for so now I'm saving this look even though I don't have it defined in here this is still gonna work check it out there you go hello universe you know it, it runs the system no problem there right it, it, the most important thing for you to know about this feature is that you know it's you know, a, a good use case that you might be able to use it for is, you know, your system migrating data onto your system should not be something that is 
uh, accidental or exceptional, right? So sometimes when you're doing data migration, you'll see a lot of engineers out there, they go and say, oh, let's just, you know, move the data directly into the storage without having to go through the API. That's a very, very bad decision because you're basically bypassing existing checks and balances that are put in place, right? To make sure that your data is consistent, that it follows particular rules and all that kind of stuff, right? There might be some rules, just very tiny rules that you want to basically disable. For instance, you don't want to put a, you know, a recent date time stamp on the data that's going into your system, or you don't want to validate that date time stamp that's going into your system because this is migrated data that's coming from, you know, ages ago, right? What, what should you do in that case? You should follow a, a, a practice such as this one that allows you to disable turn off turn on and off you know certain features like these that's a real life enterprise application uh, example that you can actually definitely take advantage of now someone might ask me a question someone might say well hassan how do i get rid of it how do i get rid of it so if you have a feature enabled you can easily get rid i don't know why i keep <laughs> clicking shift enter and then i skip under the next line but you can do undefined undefine and then you put that guy in here now you're basically removing it so there is add the feature and then there is removing the feature does it work let's find out there you go so even though it's globally defined right you can go and say for this particular file i don't want this feature to be in there right there might be a way for you to kind of enable and disable these features through uh, environment variables which is a lot a lot more friendly, you know, and a lot less, you know, uh, uh, polluting to your code because this is this is a C++ thing. This thing definitely came from C++. C++. As, as as a lot of you may know, C# -sharp came C# -sharp is the daughter of Java and C++, right? So what when you put Java and C++ together, you get C# -sharp. that's that's exactly what how it came to be and a lot of the people that develop C# -sharp are actually, you know, uh, Java uh, folks that came from Java background and all that kind of stuff. Okay, now you also have to understand that, you know, your features, enabling and disabling the features can work on the file size, right? So as in the, at the file scope, you can go and say for this particular file, as long as you make sure that where the execution happens, where the code runs, you know, the, the, the feature is, is enabled or disabled, you should be just in good shape right there is a lot more of these capabilities that you can actually do like you can literally go and say you know i don't want i want to uh, define x like this and i want this particular block of code so you go and go and say fx right and then you go here and you say end f like this but that looks really 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 ugly like see this here is the equivalent of doing that conditional stuff Right, and if X is defined, it's going to run the code. If X is not defined, it's not going to run the code. Let's let's try it. Let's see what it what it does. Check this out. If X is defined, yeah, because X is defined. Now, if I take X out, like this, look, the code itself disappears, and that's not going to work for you because now you're going to have a compilation problem. So conditional is this really, really nice, simple, easy way of you keeping your code as is, but enabling and disabling. Uh, your code, uh, you know, based on your needs and your business business logic. Uh, I hope you find this a little bit useful. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. Go read about this. There's a lot of magic that you can do in your C-sharp project. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in another video. Take care.